Thanks for dialing in. I'm Gordon Sider, a foot and ankle surgeon in Sydney. Today we're talking about regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine's kind of a new technique. It's been around since 1995, and it may be applicable in the management of your treatment. So without further ado, let's talk about what's involved. Medicine has been fascinated by the possibility of being able to regenerate not only just cells, but also whole limbs. A lot of this has come from the Mexican salamander, which amazingly can regenerate even complex organs like hips, knees, and their feet. From here, we've taken on the possibility that we could regenerate a cartilage surface. And that is what the purpose that we're gonna be talking about and how this applies to the Ilazara frame. The journey, begins when we look at work done by Elazarov. He was born in 1921 and worked through to 1992, a Russian physician who invented the Elazarov frame. The Elazarov frame has undergone a number of changes over the years, and it's one, th one of the devices that we use in distraction arthroplasty. Let's look at the science behind distraction arthroplasty, which has been used for end-stage ankle arthritis or severe cartilage injury of the ankle joint. There's been some great papers that have been written and published in Foot and Ankle International. And there's the papers that I look at from hospitals for special surgery really define very well what the limitations and indications are for the procedure. I published a paper in 2021, which you might like to have a look at, where we looked at specifically the advantages and disadvantages of the three main treatments for end-stage arthritis of the ankle joint, namely fusion, joint replacement, and the newer treatment distraction arthroplasty. If we look at the science which we use in the management of end-stage arthritis by using distraction arthroplasty, we look at a couple of different points. The first point is that we need to unload the joint. The second thing is that we need to do a procedure to stimulate the cartilage to repair itself, which is namely microfracture, where we stimulate the underlying joint surface. We remove all the osteophytes. And in some circumstances, we need to realign the joint, which is a procedure called an osteotomy. So when we distract the joint, what happens inside the joint is the cartilage, first of all, is allowed to rest. In that, we hope that it will both increase its number and throw out more matrix. The matrix is the actual cushion which allows the joint to protect itself. In that process, it seems that there's, there's a negative pressure producing the joint, which uh, encourages the cartilage cells to, to both promote the healing of themselves. And there's also an underlying chemical change within the joint and an increase in the proteoglycans, which appear to be useful in the management of uh, the joint healing. So this comes down to who fits into a good category to undergo distraction and hence joint salvage. When you look at the literature behind this, there's quite a lot written on it. And in the paper that we wrote recently, what we found was that there is a general indication that men are seem to do better than women. Young men seem to do, the, do better. And also there is a small period of time between the initiating event and the actual surgery. The lucky thing is that the most arthritis that occurs in the ankle joint is what we would call post-traumatic arthritis as opposed to osteoarthritis. And post-traumatic arthritis seems to respond quite well to distraction compared to osteo. This does not necessarily mean that if you fall outside these categories that you're not a person that could have this procedure, it just means that the procedure may take longer in order to get to the end point. There may be further things that we need to do for you, such as use of PRP or other adjuvants within the joint to stimulate the cartilage cells to heal. And it might take physically longer and more physiotherapy for you to get to the end point. So a couple of pointers when you look at distraction arthroplasty. First of all, when you've got the frame on, it's not about pain. You should take your painkillers regularly and you should very carefully adhere to the post-operative pin side instructions. But when you, in, once you've got your frame off, just remember this is not about pain. 
And what I'll be telling you is, if it hurts, don't do it. And there's a great picture of Homer showing something you should not do. Apart from that, when I look at patients that have done the best from distraction arthroplasty, there's been a couple of things that they've done very well. One is hydrotherapy and practicing walking in the water seems very useful when you get the okay to do so. And the second thing is to get on a bike regularly, 10 to 15 minutes per day with no resistance, and just try to get that into your regime. Otherwise, it's hard to fit in every day. There's a couple of tests, things that I don't think that you should do. One is use of a wobble board. I just think it's too vicious to the joint's early rehabilitation. And the other thing is I don't think you should be worried too much about what's called a knee to wall test. Your movements will come back and you don't want to push it, otherwise it can be really painful. So that concludes our blog today on regenerative medicine and use of the Elizara frame. I hope it's been interesting to you and don't forget we've got lots of information on the website, we blog every week and we're here to help. So if you have any further questions, please contact our office and uh, thanks very much once more for listening. Bye.